In this van tour, I'm going to show you this Peugeot Boxer L3 H2, which is our biggest electrical setup yet. Let's take a look on inside. So we were really excited to build this van. It was for my parents as they go into their retirement. They're gonna be traveling around the UK and Europe three to four months at a time every year. And it gave us an opportunity to experiment with some methods and some ideas that we had in the workshop. And we're really pleased with how they've turned out and can't wait to show you. The look and feel of the van is inspired by the love for vintage interiors. They've used brass, handles and hardware and also some dark blues in the cupboard fronts in the shake style doors which we think look really nice. The van was named Gus after their boxer dog who recently passed away sadly. He was meant to be going away on the travels in the van. Uh, he in fact came on the travels with Emily and I when we first went away in the van and loved it but we have got this tribute to him and a couple of nice touches uh, such as the name and these bespoke coasters. As this is my parents van it gave us the opportunity to experiment with some new ideas that we had in the workshop we're really pleased with how these have turned out one of them is a large solar rack which is on the roof housing our biggest solar panel array uh, that we've ever put on a van the electrical setup itself is the biggest again and we're really happy with how this has turned out meaning you can use all your cooking appliances at the same time we've also used a 48 volt system rather than just a 12 volt system we've gone with no grooves in the walls just to give a different aesthetic to what we've put into our previous conversions we've also added these press studs onto the back of the cushions to stop them from falling off the chairs when you're driving the vehicle the cushions have also been increased to four inches of depth with two inch memory foam topper and more wadding so that they are more comfortable when you're sitting on them in this cupboard here, we've got a fresh water filter. This is from Off Grid Water and it's a reverse osmosis final stage filter. That links up to your uh, drinking tap here so that you can have drinking bottle quality water in your van and not have to worry about any impurities or stagnant water that might gather in your fresh water tank. In the cab of the van, we've added a reversing camera, a swivel on this single passenger seat with a passenger table as well. There's a storage step down below and up top there's more storage. We've also got the electric step switch, the awning light and the step light switch here, the curtain to black out the cab at night time. And we've also added this cab light, which is on a dimmer switch. And we really like how this works. So I'll show you that now. And I'll swivel the chair. You can see these lovely white marble effects, Duma panel tiles. These give a really nice modern look uh, to the shower and coupled with this niche at the back, we're really happy with the aesthetic. It's got a bamboo duckboard and a nature's head composting toilet, along with a regular domestic shower that's powered by your Truma Boy or Combi. For the seating area in this van, we've got a fixed seat, which houses a third belted seat which is the folding agouti seat and we've also got a movable seat which moves up and down the van floor on an L track so that it can be secured into place and when it's secured into the open position you can also drop this table down and form a third bed which is 1 meter 70 long by 60 centimeters wide. We really like this uh, seating setup because you can have it as a bench when you're static or you can pull them apart and sit opposite one another a bit like a diner and where you're having your dinner or your evening meal. So I'll pull it apart now and show you what it looks like. So you can see here I'm in the dinette position with the moving seat over there. Um, you've got the table in the middle on a lagoon style swivel which is really nice and you've got two positions you've got one bracket there and one bracket here. What I'll do now is I'll just show you this fixed seat that we've got um, a belted seat inside. Behind the shower cubicle, we've got this kitchen unit here. It features a double induction hob and a large drawer underneath. 
This van is completely gasless, so we're running the cooking appliances off of electric from the inverter, and the boiler and heating system is run off the diesel from the fuel tank of the vehicle. It's getting more and more popular as LPG is becoming a bit harder to come by in the UK, and this also provides a really good option for um, being off-grid and not having another fuel source to have to worry about finding when you're out on the road. There's also going to be a single shelf air fryer which will be stored underneath the induction hob down here and plugged in on top of the countertop using this plug socket here. We wanted to install the most sophisticated electrical setup that we could inside this van. So what we've done is we've worked with Roma and Tiny Builds Electric um, on our electrical systems and we've come up with a setup using a 48 volt lithium battery from Roma with a Scotty AI DC-DC charger for the alternator and the Multi-RS from Victron. And what this inverter charger does is it allows us to run AC appliances up to 4.8 kilowatts on continuous load, which is twice the amount that we would have been able to run on a 3 kVA MultiPlus using a 12 volt leisure system. So to get more power out of the inverter, we had to increase the leisure battery voltage to 48 volts. We've also increased the solar panels up on the roof. So we have eight 80 watt panels in series. This provides a solar voltage of 180 volts, which is enough to trigger the MPPT inside of the multi RS. So rather than having an inverter and an MPPT, they're combined into one unit, which reduces installation time. And there's also a really nifty isolation um, switch built into the MultiPlus as well. So you can isolate your solar panels on the multi, uh, multi RS without having to have an additional isolator switch. The Scotty AI is uh, a DC DC charger from a company called Safari. It's a 1500 watt um, DC DC um, charger, which uses the vehicle's alternator to charge your leisure battery. Now in the past, we've used Victor and Orions, which have been really good pieces of kit. However, they haven't got anything in the range of 1500 watts as a, uh, a power output. So this basically enables us to use much more of the alternator's capacity uh, to charge the leisure battery. Now this is a five kilowatt hour, 48 volt battery. And just by the Squatty AI being installed, we can charge that from 0% up to 100% in about two and a half to three hours, which is really impressive. One reason why a 48 volt system is preferable is to be able to get more AC power from your inverter. So having a 12 volt leisure battery, you're kind of limited with the three KVA MultiPlus as the upper limit of what you can be generating from the inverter. This is because the low voltage requires thicker cables um, and there's only so much that the voltage pressure will push through into uh, the inverter. By upping the voltage of the leisure battery, the cables can be slightly smaller and also um, there's a bit more pressure to force into the inverter so the inverters can be upwards of 5 kva or the multi rs which is 6 kva which is really handy to be able to run uh, induction hobs and air fryers at the same time the induction hob uses about 2.4 kilowatts of power so the multi plus on its own could power this continuously but you wouldn't be able to run any other ac appliances where it, and the air fryer likewise uses about 2.4 kilowatts of power but now what we can do is we can run both of those appliances on full power and still be within the 4.8 kilowatts of output that the multi rs can sustain continuously by having this kind of system you haven't got to worry about tripping the circuits or overloading your multi plus um, it could be accidental you could forget that you're running something and turn something on and uh, the multi plus goes into overload um, it should obviously reset itself and then be um, usable and um, after a period of time with this electrical setup you can run all your electrical cooking appliances without worrying about overloading your system follow me and i'll show you some of the external features on this van on the back doors we've got a double bike rack from Tule which is a really nice piece of kit. It doesn't require any drilling or bolts through it. It just clamps onto this back door and allows you to take two bikes with you on your journey. It folds up nice and discreet, which is really good. We've also got the drain down taps and the boiler flue on this offside. And they've also gone with the rogue alloy and the 
general grab our all-terrain tires and then behind the driver's door we've got the water fill point you can see here so this is the garage of the van and we've made it out of a nice durable buffalo board you've got a light up here and then a light for the electrical cupboard there you can see the electrical cupboard on the near side you've got the multi rs which is the inverter mppt mains charger that i was talking about there and then inside the electrical cupboard behind the perspex you've got all of the victron distributors and the servo gx along with the fuse boards for the 12 volt and the 230 volt circuits you've got the lithium battery in there as well and then the fridge with the ventilation here on the off side you've got a wheel box which has some shelving on top of it and then if you look at the back here we've also got a heat vent to dry out the garage space and then this is a outdoor shower connection with a hose which lives in this storage box in here thanks for watching this band tour of gus the Persia boxer we hope you enjoyed it and found it useful do like and subscribe to our channel for more van life content i'll see you next time